Ferrari's Imola GP might not have turned out the way its fans expected, but the Maranello team are extremely satisfied with the upgrade package they installed on the car. Although they were effectively the third fastest car on Sunday, many anticipated prior to the race that they would have been the favourites to fight for the win. But Ferrari is now confident that they've unlocked everything they need in order to be out on the top step of the podium. But with the Evo package yet to be extracted and learned about, can Ferrari fight back in Monaco and more importantly can they keep the edge over McLaren who is now seriously threatening to be the team that Ferrari hoped to be before the beginning of the season. It's no secret that the Imola GP was supposed to revolve around Ferrari and with the Italian squad finishing P3 and P5 on home turf, it wasn't really what the fans were looking for. Regardless, Leclerc is optimistic that the team's finish was exactly what happens when the grid is so close and a lot depends on the starting position of the drivers. Talking about this, the Monegasque driver emphasised the importance of Saturday's events, especially the upcoming track in Monaco, highlighting the strength that his team has just unlocked, adding, I really believe Imola was all about track position. I think our pace is very, very strong. I'm more optimistic than yesterday looking back at the qualifying because this is where I think we are lacking a weekend like this. And what makes me optimistic is that if I look back at the data, I thought we were losing in turns two, three and four, which would have been tyre related again, but that wasn't the case. It's very interesting that Ferrari found out exactly where they are losing losing time to Red Bull and McLaren, but the fact that they couldn't have done anything about it goes to show that there is still a lot of work to be done on the car. Obviously, even though the team worked on a stable platform, introducing a big upgrade package that hasn't really gotten the best feedback from signs, which we'll cover later in the video, comes with its own pros and cons. Similar to Red Bull, the team now has to learn a thing or two before they find the sweet operating spot of the car. And when talking about the primary disadvantage to Red Bull and McLaren, Leclerc went on to say, we lost everything in the straights and they are doing something weird with the energy, engine wise. So we've got to look into it, but nothing is impossible to change. So we'll look into that and once we fix it, I think we've got a real shot at going back on the top step of the podium. This is definitely good news for Ferrari because for once they understand where their issues come from and what part of the car should be addressed for the upcoming race weekend. This was not the case in the past where everything that the team tried on the car just did not seem to work at all, which is why they were forced to experiment. And if we look at the data, it shows exactly the same scenario that Leclerc was talking about. The top speeds of Verstappen and Norris without DRS on the main straight were 323 and 321 kilometers per hour respectively, whereas Leclerc managed to get to 316 kilometers an hour only, which is a great difference of seven and five kilometers per hour compared to the top two drivers on the grid. To make things worse the main straight in Imola now has a shorter DRS zone and it goes directly into sector one where Ferrari managed to lose a lot of time due to the nature of the corners. That is very unlikely to be the case in Monaco where Leclerc is expecting to have a great home race due to the tight nature of the track and the fact that Ferrari has always loved circuits where the downforce requirements are a bit higher than usual. Plus, the team wouldn't have to deal with the top speed issue that they experienced in Imola, meaning that this issue would likely be addressed for the Barcelona GP, where it will play yet again a massive role. When talking about the upcoming race in Monaco, Leclerc did not hide the high hopes that his team has. Further adding, yes, I believe I'm going to win in Monaco. I came to Imola to win. We have this mentality every time we approach a weekend. On a track like Monaco, everything is possible and we'll go there with the win in mind. I'm only happy when I win and today we didn't quite make it, but it's looking good for the rest of the season. What is also good news for Ferrari is that the upgrades and setup of the car did not affect the tyre degradation improvement they made in 2024. They were able to pit last from the leading pack and what that brought was fresher tyres towards the end of the race. However, Ferrari was not able to utilise this advantage and while their tyres tend to be preserved more during the race, the team is still struggling to put them in the right operating window and therefore make the difference that McLaren made on the second stint with the high 
hard tyres. Leclerc was close to fighting with Norris once the tyres started to get into a better temperature range, but once he got out of the grass at the double chicane turn, it was obvious that he would have a hard time catching up with the McLaren and Red Bull ahead. Be that as it may, it does seem like Ferrari has a lot of potential to unlock because according to signs, the upgrades in Imola were not as great as everybody anticipated them to be. When talking about this, the Spaniard went on to elaborate. The upgrades worked exactly as we expected. Unfortunately, for some reason, everyone expected us to be fine this weekend with a new package. I've been seeing numbers of our package going around that were completely out of reality nowadays. Already, bringing a tenth of a second is a good job by the team, and I'm not saying we've got one, two or half a tenth, but it's definitely not the number people were mentioning. What this goes to show is that either Sainz is not comfortable with the car, which is something that he expressed throughout the radio multiple times during this weekend and was visible in his race pace compared to Leclerc, or the car has a lot more potential to be unlocked with setup choices and driver preferences. The general conclusion is that Verstappen is the man to beat, as it was the scenario in the past couple of years, but this time the Red Bull rivals might have found more performance compared to the beginning of the regulations and in a starting grid where the top three drivers are within one tenth of a second anything can happen and what is also worth mentioning is that Norris who is now coming off two straight podium finishes and his first career win in Miami is only 48 points behind the lead of Verstappen and much closer to Leclerc in the drivers championship sitting at 12 points behind and at P4 at the moment definitely McLaren have made a great step and Ferrari cannot use the old excuse of not knowing what is going on with the car because they have hyped up the upgrades to a great extent but it was a similar pattern back in 2022 when they brought up Grace to Imola but they only started to get the best out of the car in Barcelona which was two races later. Ferrari would have to pick up the pace with both its drivers because from what we can see right now, Sainz has started to slack off a bit in the last three races after the original hype was built around him at the beginning of the season when he was the faster Ferrari driver. In the last three events, Sainz finished 10 seconds behind Leclerc in China, 7 seconds in Miami and a staggering 15 seconds in Imola and the fact that he had the same speed and pace as Hamilton while being on the same strategy with the Brit goes to show that maybe the upgrades are not fitting him as much as he'd hoped they would. The season will slowly but surely start to turn into what Vasseur predicted, a lot of work on and off the track because the upgrades themselves might not work precisely as you want them if you don't have the right crew and drivers that would extract the maximum out of it. The prime example of that is Max Verstappen who although nowhere near both Ferrari drivers in all of the free practice sessions still managed to get pole position and keep up the pace ahead of Norris and Leclerc for the entirety of the race while also participating in the 24th sim racing in Nuremberg. With all this in mind do you think that Ferrari has a legitimate chance of fighting with Red Bull and McLaren in the remainder of the season and more importantly do you think that they can capitalize on Red Bull being a one-man show and steal the Constructors' Championship in a sneaky matter. Let us know in the comments below. And once you do that, make sure to check out the video that's appearing on your screen right now.